Hi, I'm Jennifer Fairbanks and I'm going to be going through a demonstration of using the digitizer with poly pattern. So I just showed a couple steps on how to set up your roll up with, um, with poly pattern. And if you actually have to calibrate it first, you'll be pulling a card like this out of your digitizer and you'll be following directions to calibrate your digitizer. Um, Poly Pattern also has a bunch of different, basically different maps of your puck. So this puck in particular starts with 0, 1, 2, 3 across the top. And in their reference book, they actually have several different settings and several different puck layouts. So this just happens to be the one I have. I copied it and taped it on my wall as a quick reference because um, after having a child, I forget all the time which these are no matter how often I use this. So I always have this kind of as my cheat sheet right here. I also have last point, quarter inch from the first point, um, and, but I'll go over this as I'm actually digitizing a pattern. Um, but I have not plugged everything in yet so I'm going to go ahead and get everything plugged in and then I'll be right back and I'll have this pointed at the digitizing board so you can see what I'm doing. Okay so I got my board plugged in and plugged into my computer. I just opened up Poly Pattern, and I actually am having my laptop handy. Um, maybe you have a separate workspace where you can have it, but basically your computer needs to be connected to your digitizer. Um, I'm opening up Poly Pattern, and as soon as I get this open, so my laptop's right here, and I know in the digitizer directions it says, do not, actually let me get a new garment. So I'm going up, I'm starting new garment. So you can kind of see maybe, let's see if I can adjust this a little bit. So I'm going to new, I'm going to save it, and this is my, my stuffed bear. Oops, looks like I already created a pattern for it, so, okay. Okay, and now I'm going to go and add a new pattern. So file new pattern, and I'm just going to go ahead and save this so it has a name, so I don't accidentally, oh, there it is, stuff bear, okay. And it always beeps at you when you're doing something that it doesn't like. So I'm going to go down here, and there is, and actually, I need to set up my digit digitizer directions on my laptop. So I did the steps on my other computer, so I'm going to come down here to digitizer. I got my cheat sheet right here. Yes, it is a, uh, a serial digitizer. Calcom 9X, COM 4, 968, and we're good. Okay, so this actually, of course it won't find it. Okay, so I'm gonna be right back and I'm gonna figure out why this one's not working. Okay, I had to reposition a little bit. My battery on my camera just died, um, and um, I got my digitizer working. I actually had reinstalled Windows 10, and I had to reinstall the driver, the key, the, the key span driver. So now it's working. Um, I also had to go in and change my COM. So under where we did the settings, um, where I put COM4, I actually changed it to COM3, and I changed the, it, I don't know. It Sometimes it it wants to be in a specific um, outlet, and I had it in the wrong one. So it's all ready to go. Um, I know right now you can't see my digitizer board, but you can kind of see my screen. So when I clicked over here, and actually I only click here, so I don't know if you can see this quite yet, but if you click on the little digitizer board, you'll see that there is a line right here. And this is basically my screen of where, uh, of what my board is. So this is the exact dimensions of my digitizer board. So when I actually start digitizing, it's gonna be all within this frame. Now I just realized that this is actually in centimeters. So um, I'm gonna go in and I think it's in centimeters. It looks like it's in centimeters. I'm gonna go in and modify that. So it's, I'm actually seeing it in inches. 
um, just because I don't see, I'm not very comfortable with centimeters and the metric system. Um, I prefer my imperial system. Um, I would love to learn metric, but I just don't know it yet. So I'm going to get this set up. I'm going to move the camera so hopefully I have a little battery juice on it now that I can show the digitizing. Okay, so I've got my pattern here, and this is my stuffed bear pattern. Now, I'm not so worried about taping, getting this all lined up on my grid. If I want to, I can actually line this up so I'm actually right on my grid line, so I know my grain line. Um, but in case you've got a pattern that's kind of odd shaped and you have a smaller digitizer, um, you might need to digitize it at an angle. So for this one, I'm just going to tape it down. Um, nothing, and I just moved a little bit. So just enough that it'll keep it in place and then I remove my tape afterwards. Another thing we also need to do is we actually need to have our grain line defined on here because we have to mark it. Now I have my grid on my paper which I'm using as my grain line but I don't have it drawn anywhere so I'm just going to draw my grain line right there. Okay so now we're going to begin. Now we start whew, excuse me okay I'm going to start up here at the corner, so right where that corner is. It doesn't matter what angle you've got um, your puck on. So I'm going to start, this is my boundary point. So I'm going to do that as O. Then I'm going to come all the way down here, because I know this is a completely straight line. I'm going to get that corner, and then I'm going to hit O again. This going across, and you'll hear my computer is actually going to beep for each time. And actually the first one didn't go. Okay, so then this is a whole curved line. So the curved line is my three. So I'm actually going to do about every inch or so. I don't want to over notch it or over mark it. Because if I over mark it, then it's going to be too difficult to fix it later. come up here and this is my boundary point. Okay, now I'm going to get my curve again. And make sure my computer doesn't fall asleep. And it's kind of good that I've actually got the, the computer, I don't know if you can see the computer here, um, but I'm kind of keeping my eye on the computer as well, making sure that the points are going there. Dinging. And then I'm going to come up to my corner. Okay, and it looks like my first one didn't go. So then I'm going to come all the way down here, now about a quarter of an inch from where my first point is. I'm going to make that my last point. So I'm going to hit the O again. Okay, then the fabric direction is 7. So I want to do this. I'll kind of go from top to bottom, so I hit 7, and then 7, some point down on the line over here, and then F, and then Enter, and if you look at my computer screen, there is my pattern piece. So now I've got the first pattern piece here, I'm just going to grab that and move it over to the side, and then come back to my digitizer board and then we're going to work on the next piece. So this is going to take a little bit. Um, I'll work on, I'll probably digitize a few more and my battery's about to die, so I'll come right back. Okay, so I just finished digitizing all the patterns for my bear, except for this piece, and I've tried this now four times, and for some reason it's not wanting to digitize, so it's really a circle, so it'll be easier for me to just draw it in the program. So as of right now, when I click here and delete that, because I can't get it to complete itself as a pattern. I'm just going to go ahead and save this, so you can see here. And so the next steps from here is like, yes, it's really easy to digitize the patterns. It goes pretty fast. Um, you know, it could take you 15 minutes or less to do. Um, and it's really great if you are kind of old school and you still do a lot of your patterns by hand. Um, using the digitizer will definitely help. 
Um, I am old school. I like doing things by hand, but I like to get things in rough shape into the computer and then clean it up in the computer. Um, I'm actually, it's a big change for me because I used to just be like everything by hand, everything by hand. I don't trust the computer. I'm still one of those people that after every single step I do, I print out all my patterns just in case something crashes and I at least have a paper copy of it. Um, so now at this point, I'm going to go to my other computer because it's a bigger screen and it's easier to do the screen, screen share um, with that and I'm going to work on uh, making sure all my pattern pieces walk. And so that will be the next step in the next video that I'm actually going to be doing. So there we go. This is digitizing. This was with the um, basically the GTCO Calcom um, Roll Up 3 and this is the 3036 that I was working on. Um, I think that this is probably a reasonable size. Whenever I work with a pattern that is larger than 30 by 36, I usually draw a line in the middle of the pattern, digitize half the pattern, then digitize the other half of the pattern. Especially for my fancy patterns that I make um, from draping on the dress form, those ones are, I just can't draft those on the computer. Um, those really have to be on the dress form and I do them by hand. So, um, and that is it.